Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new tutorial series on Linux for programmers. Now this series is going to aim to make you comfortable using a Linux device and teach you the things that you need to know as a programmer about the Linux operating system. Now specifically, we're going to be focusing on common Linux commands. We're also going to be talking about networking, SSH. We're going to be talking about users and permissions, the basic Linux text editors that you need to know, and then a few more advanced things like cron jobs, shell scripts, and how you can actually connect a domain with a virtual server. Now these are all good things to know. And as a programmer, you do need to have a lot of these skills. In fact, at many job interviews, you will get asked, are you comfortable using Linux? Do you know these different Linux? Linux distributions, and depending on your answer to that question, you may or may not be getting a job. Linux is just something that you really should be comfortable with as a programmer, and even though you're not going to be using it every single day, it's very important that if you do need to work on a Linux machine, you know how to do so. So with that said, let's get started in this tutorial series. In this first video, we're going to be learning how to set up a virtual Linux machine and then how to SSH into it. Now that we're here on Linode, I'll just quickly walk you through the platform. So to create a brand new Linode, you can press this create button here. You can also create a bunch of other things like volumes, node balancers, you can deal with domains on Linode. In fact, I actually host one of my domains on Linode, as well as two of my servers that I use related to my discord server, which you guys should definitely join from the link in the description. Anyways, Linode also has strong integration and support for Kubernetes and pretty much anything that you need as a developer, you can access here on Linode. Now let's get started by creating our first server. You can see I have two right here, but to create one, we're going to press the create a Linode button or create at the top left and then press Linode. Now from here, we need to select a few things. So the distribution of our Linode, the region, root password, and all of that. Now for this tutorial series, I'm going to be using Ubuntu as my distribution. So I'm going to pick Ubuntu 20.10. I would recommend that you all use Ubuntu as well. And the rationale behind this is that Ubuntu is one of the most common Linux distributions. A lot of the other Linux distributions are fairly similar. So a bunch of the stuff that I teach here will actually apply to other Linux distributions as well. Of course, there's differences between them, but Ubuntu is what I'm most comfortable with and familiar with. And I figured that's what we should use for this series. Anyways, after we pick our image, we can go to our region. So I'm going to select Toronto, Ontario, and then we can choose our Linode plan. So you can see that the cheapest Linode plan, and this is really all that we need for this series, is $5 a month and is the Nanode 1 gigabyte with 25 gigabytes of storage. Personally, I'm going to go with the Linode 4 gigabyte just because I want something that's a little bit faster, but you're welcome to pick whatever you like. And you can also see that they have dedicated CPU options, high memory options, and GPU options as well, though just not in this region. So let's stick with the Linode 4 gigabyte and then let's give a label to our Linode. So I'm just going to call this one tutorial, but I'd highly recommend you call this something that's meaningful to you because when you have a lot of Linodes, it's hard to keep track of which one is which. Lastly, we need to enter our root password. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. All right, so I've entered my password and we're actually ready to go and create our first Linode. Now, before I do that, I will mention that there's some add-ons like you can add backups each month and a private IP address. You also, if you wanted a Linode that's for a specific purpose, so you wanted it say for like MongoDB or a Minecraft server or something like that, you could click on the marketplace. And within the marketplace, there's actually a bunch of options for kind of pre-built Linodes or pre-configured servers. And you can press on this and then that's actually going to kind of do a lot of the necessary setup for you for whatever the application is that you're running. Anyways, I just need to go back and reselect my distribution because we're not going to choose any of those marketplace apps, but it's really interesting and definitely makes it much faster to set something up. Uh, so I guess I'm going to have to go back through and redo a bit of this. Yes, I need to re-enter my password but that's fine. Now we are ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and press create, and this will just take one second and then our Linode will be booted up and I will be right back. All right. So our Linode is now running. You can see that because we see the running icon right here before it was showing booting and it was kind of a little yellow icon. Now quickly, if you want to power off or reboot your Linode, you can press the buttons right here. We don't really need to mess around with anything more on this page though. All we need to do is keep track of this IP address right here. So find your Linode's IP address. It should just be under IP addresses. You're going to want the one that's shorter. Yours will probably look a little bit different th than this, but copy it to your clipboard and also make sure you remember your root password because that's what we're going to need next. 
So now that we have this IP address, we actually need to SSH into this server and start doing something on it, start working on the server. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how to SSH into your machine on Mac, and then I will show you how to do so on Windows. So on Mac, it's really straightforward. You don't need to download anything. You simply need to open up your terminal. You can do that by going to the spotlight search and searching for terminal, then go inside of your terminal and simply type SSH, then root at, and then the IP address of your server. After you do that, simply press enter. It will likely prompt you with some question that says yes slash no as the potential answer. Just type yes in there and press enter, and then it should show you a password field. Here at the password field, simply type in the password for your server. So what you set up when you were on Linode, so the root password, it's not going to actually show you any characters are being typed in, but it is working. So just type it in and then press enter, and then you are good to go. You can now skip through the Windows section, but I will show you now how to SSH into your machine on Windows if you do not have a Mac. So go to this website right here. I'm going to leave a link in the description, but it's simply putty.org and download this tool. This is simply an SSH client and it just allows us to actually SSH into our server. It makes it really easy to store all of the SSH credentials and information and all of that. So once you've downloaded Putty, what you need to do is open that up. So you can do that from the Windows bar down here and you should see an application that looks something like this. What we're going to do is we're going to paste our IP address right into the host name or IP address field. And then I'm going to show you a few more things to configure our putty session. So first of all, the port number of 22 is fine. You can leave it like that. You want the connection type to be SSH and then close window on exit. You're welcome to select what you want here, but I'm going to leave it only on clean exit. Next, what I'm going to do is just make the font size of my putty window or SSH client or console or whatever you want to call it a little bit larger. So I'm going to go to the window thing here. I'm going to go to appearance. I'm going to go here where it says change and I'm going to change the font to just be size 24 just so that you guys can read this because it's a little bit small. Otherwise, you also can change the colors and all of that from this page, but we don't need to do that. Anyways, let's go back to session. You can see that we still have the IP address in and now what we're going to do is just save the settings that we just put in. So anything that we do or anything that we're changing kind of in this putty client, it's usually a good idea just to save it so we don't have to do this again. So what we're going to do is insert a name where it says saved sessions. I'm just going to call this tutorial and then you can go ahead and press save and that will save all of this information. So just to show you how this works, if I delete this IP address here and then I press on tutorial and I don't double press it. I didn't actually mean to double press it. Let me close this and, and show you again here. All right. So I just had to reopen putty. I don't know. I accidentally double pressed it. Didn't mean to, but if you press it and then you press load, then you see that it actually loads the name. It loads the IP address. And if I were to go back to appearance here, you can see the 24 uh, point font is still saved. So anyways, this is how you save a session. I usually recommend you to save them and then you can easily load it after. Anyways, once you have the IP address in this field and you've changed all the settings that you want, go ahead and press open or as you saw, double click on the tutorial thing there. And then this will open up a little window. So when you're prompted with a little window that looks something like this, just go ahead and press yes. There's no worries with this. And then you should be good and you sh should see something that says log in as. Now I'm just going to make this uh, full screen so that it's easier to see. But when it says log in as, you're going to log in as the root user. It's going to say root like that. And then it's going to ask you for the password. Now, the password is whatever you put in when you actually set up this Linode. So in that root password field. So I'm just going to type mine in. You're going to notice that you don't actually see anything popping up, but it is indeed being typed in. And then once you've typed in the password, press enter. Now, assuming this password is correct, you should get a screen that looks something like this. And now you can see information about your Linode. So at this point in time, if you've successfully logged into your Linode, you have completed this first tutorial series. There's one last thing that we can do that's usually a good idea, which is just to update the software on our Linode. But after we do that, that's going to conclude video one. And then in video two, we'll move on and talk about some basic Linux commands you need to know. So anyways, to end here, we're going to update the software on our Linode by typing sudo apt update like that. And this will just run through and update all of the necessary packages. And then the last thing we're going to do after we update is we are going to upgrade. So we're going to say sudo apt hyphen 
up and then grade like that. And then this will upgrade all of the packages that we need. If you're prompted with something that says, do you want to use this much extra space? Just go ahead and type yes. It may prompt you that multiple times. After you type yes, press enter, and then you should be good to go. So anyways, now that our server is updated and upgraded, we are ready to continue with this series. So I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.